And in Jamaica, as Youth Month 2015 kicks into high gear, the Jamaica Labour Party is lamenting that nothing is being done to protect the youth of the country. At a press conference on Monday, it was revealed that from the start of the year to October 24, 54 children have been murdered, 38 boys and 16 girls. Opposition spokesperson on education, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, says despite this fact, coupled with thousands of reports of child abuse, the government continues to only pay lip service to violence against youth. She adds that the National Action Plan for an Integrated Response to Youth and Violence, announced by Youth Minister Lisa Hanna in 2014 and again earlier this year, is still not understood or implemented. So I have some questions for the minister. And the first one is, Minister, where is your plan? Where is your plan in respect of violence and youth? It has not been published on any website, and I know it has not been tabled in the Parliament. Have you yet finished your plan of action? Minister, it is time in this youth month that you not only produce the plan, but you tell the young people of this country. Tell us what, if anything, have you done under this plan of action that you have announced from June 2014. The minister always said, also said earlier this year that the government was spending $89 billion on youth this year. Now, here we are in Youth Month. The minister must tell the young people of Jamaica, she must tell the youth, what has this money been spent on? What projects? Because I can tell you, the young people are not feeling it. They feel that she is hashtag disconnected. The Senator's questions also surround the implementation of an initiative to increase the number of places at which child abuse could be reported. She notes that since the announcement in Child's Month this year, nothing has been heard. Has this been implemented as yet? Has staff been trained? Have the, has staff been increased? More importantly, was a single database that will allow for real-time reporting and transmission of information and the avoidance of cracks between which our young children who are under threat and in fear for their lives will not fall. Has that database and that portal been implemented as yet? What is happening with 1888 Protect? Again in Child's Month, we were promised that the number of people on the line would be increased. We were promised that they would be staffed for 24 hours, that they had additional resources that were going to come on board what is happening. Up to last night, we tried to get through at about 9.45. We tried for 20 minutes and the line was busy the entire time. Is it dis disconnected too? Or is it that it just does not have sufficient people to ensure that any young children who are trying to report or anyone who is trying to report to help a young Mrs. Johnson-Smith adds that in February 2013, she moved a motion in the Senate for the review of four laws relating to the abuse of children, women, the elderly, and persons living with disabilities. She says both sides of the House agreed in October that year to the establishment of a committee to undertake the review, and the committee started working in 2014, but was discontinued by the government in December 2014. So while the Prime Minister is calling out demons, we want to know who is doing the work, who is making sure the review in laws takes place. I have an answer for you. It's not the government. And it is a real shame, a crying shame, that they utter the words that they care and, and say the words that we must take care of our children and we must protect them. But they have a committee established in Parliament since December 2014, almost a year, it has not been allowed to restart its work. It's a crying shame and another example of the fact that they are hashtag disconnected, this time from the real work. The opposition senator also expressed concern about reports of teenage pregnancy trending down. She says while the news, if accurate, would be welcomed, the data being used references from the 1970s to 2008, which would not be a fair comparative to the present day. Mrs. Johnson-Smith notes that there has been no survey on sexual and reproductive health since 2008.